Hello, <clears throat> my name is Jan Wugenfeder, and I'm a CEO at Danix and a contractor at Red Hat. Here with me is Annie Lee, Principal Software Engineer at Oracle. <clears throat> to together, we are going to talk about implementing a SRLB failover for Windows guests during the migration. So during our presentation, we are going to discuss <clears throat> Virtio Win drivers in general and give you some <clears throat> overview on the Virtio Win drivers. Uh, we will talk about some Windows guest terminology for the people that are less aware of it, discuss the problem with the SRIV migration, uh, go about a little bit overview about different solutions, and then we will discuss our solution. So let's talk about virtual event drivers first. So here we have a link to the GitHub uh, where there is our Axiom repository. And this repository can find all the major drivers, uh, all the major Virtio drivers. We have a Virtio Net, Virtio Block, Virtio SCSI, and other drivers. Uh, in this directory as well, there are some other guest drivers that are not related to Virtio, like Panic Driver and Firmware Config. And also some INF files that help us to define uh, <coughs> the system. For example, SMBIOS INF for a Q35 chipset or PCI serial. So uh, what are those drivers and how they are built? So the network and the storage driver that are built in the architecture, Microsoft architecture called Miniport drivers. So each in their uh, respected driver technology uh, for network it's NDIS and for storage it's Storeport or SCSI port. And other drivers are WDF drivers. So it's a Microsoft framework that allows you to easily write kernel drivers. What are the supported OSs? So we support all the OSs starting from Windows XP up to Windows 10 and same with Windows servers 2003 to 2019. From the Windows, for Windows 10, we also support ARM64 platform. How can you contribute? So please send pull requests. Uh, the code changes should pass Microsoft certifications, but don't worry, we are running CI on the upstream. So you are covered for that. And who were the contributors for the project during the years? So main contributors are coming from Red Hat, but we had also contributions from Virtuoso, Oracle, Google, Microsoft, AWS, and others. So now let's talk about uh, Windows uh, terms and, and how the <coughs> network driver architecture looks like in Windows. So you'll hear a lot during this presentation, Andis. So what is Andis? It's a network driver interface specification. It's also ABI for uh, network drivers. It's also the architecture of the network drivers in kernel. And there is Andis.sys, which is a Microsoft driver that you can see in Windows kernel, and <clears throat> it implements part of the Andis functionality. So if you will go from uh, bottom to top, uh, in the bottom, you will see hardware devices, and on top of them, there is a mini port driver that usually supplied by the vendor, and this driver drives the specific device. In the <clears throat> simple case that you can see from the right side, uh, there are binded protocol drivers just on top of the mini port driver. The more complicated case is when we have also intermediate driver, and then the protocol drivers are binding to the intermediate driver. So. Intermediate drivers towards the mini port driver have ABI of the protocol drivers. So mini port thinks that it's of the protocol driver and towards the protocol driver has a mini port ABI. So <coughs> protocol drivers think that they talk to the mini port driver. Why uh, do we need such a thing? So one of the examples is the MOOCs driver that can sit on top of several mini port drivers and present one virtual NIC uh, to the top layers. Also in the user space, we have notify object. Notify object can get callbacks from the network configuration subsystem and act on, to, on, uh, on those callbacks by uh, changing network configuration, removing drivers, installing drivers, etc. So how the virtual net or net KVM driver for Windows looks like. So it's NDS mini for driver, as we mentioned before. And the basic driver package looks like you have the INF file, which is an installation descriptor. You have a sys file, which is a driver binary. You have a PDF file. Those are symbols for debugging. And cut file, which is the package digital signature. So now let's discuss the problem. <clears throat> Why we even needed to do something. 
So when we are talking about paravirtualized devices <laughs> and drivers and uh, or fully emulated devices, all the code is, resides inside of QMU and QMU also controls the data path. So when we want to migrate such device, it's just migrated with virtual machine, all the device state is migrated, uh, QMU fully controls the data path, et cetera. But when we have uh, external hardware device and QMU does not control the data path, the DMA continues to run, we need somehow to migrate uh, the hardware state and therefore there are several solutions that were proposed over the years. So we'll have a small overview about them. Uh, some are more vendor specific. We'll talk about uh, what Microsoft did in Hyper-V and there's a solution in Linux with three dev that model. <clears throat> so regarding previous effort, I think almost every year on the KVM forum, we have at least one presentation about the SRV migration. So they are ranging between very vendor specific or device specific uh, <coughs> solutions to just now there's a parallel session about more generic solution. And now I am passing the presentation to Annie and she's going to give the overview about the solutions that Microsoft did and about our solution. Thanks, Ian. Hi, everyone. This is Annie from Oracle. Today, I'm going to talk about the software solutions of SRLV migra migration in Windows. So the, these solutions focus on switching data paths seamlessly between VF network and the virtual network. Before initiating the live migration, the VF network adapter will be hard to remove and all network traffic will be redirected to the virtual network data path. After the migration is done, the VF network adapter will be hard added on the target. So all the network data will go through the VF network path. Today, I will talk about the existing solutions. First, they are the Windows Snake Teaming, Windows Max Intermediate Driver and Hyper-V solution. After that, I will talk about the two net down model in Windows Virtual Driver. So the Windows Snake teaming is built in Windows since Windows Server 2012. It is similar to the bound in Linux. And the Windows Snake teaming provides the failover capability. User can put the virtual network and the VF network into one team and configure the virtual network as standby. So when the VF adapter is hard to remove, the Windows Next teaming will set the virtual adapter as active and switch the data path to the virtual. After the VF adapter is hard added, the Windows Snake Teaming will set the virtual adapter as standby and then the data path will go through the VF adapter. So the Windows Snake Teaming can be configured through, through GUI or the PowerShell in the user space. However, we prefer the solution in kernel space to switch the data path automatically and the user doesn't need to spend time or effort in configuring user space. The so Windows Max Intermediate Driver is a kernel solution. It is both one or more virtual adapters based on the relationship between the virtual adapter and underlying network adapter. It has the various models. Today, I only introduced the 122 driver model for the SRLV lab migration. This model is similar to the NIC teaming in failover mode. Its architecture is also similar to the uh, three net dev model in Linux. So this slide shows the architecture of the one to two max driver model. As you can see, the bottom are the virtual network and the VF function network. They have their own Minipod driver serve them. That's the NetQVM driver and the VF Minipod driver. 
On top of them, that's the one to two max intermediate driver. This max driver is supposed the protocol driver as a lower edge to bend to the underlying mini pod driver. Also, it's, it's supposed the mini pod driver as upper edge to bend to the TCP IP and other protocols. Inside the max driver, the mini pod virtual adapter uh, bend to the its own protocol driver internally. So the and is isn't aware of this bending. The mass driver has full control on the network data here, so it can switch the data path between the NetKVM and the VF Minipod driver. So uh, the thing is, one the underlying Minipod driver is post NDS file bending interface. To avoid the confusion between the bending interface and this file with the and this version, so I will only use the term and this here. As you can see, the protocol driver in mass driver is post and this binding interface, as well as the TCP IP and other protocols. This means this underlying mini pod driver bind to the um, max driver protocol, also bind to the up layer protocol. However, the max driver only want to use Post the virtual adapter here, not the underlying mini pod driver. So a notify object is involved here to unbind the upper layer protocol driver from the underlying NetKVM AVF mini pod driver. Here I will skip the details about the notify object and I will go into more depth on it later. So this snapshot shows the binding details of Nick teaming on Max driver. So the, they, see, they show the similar binding, so I only paste one for both. So the Ethernet 14 and the Ethernet 5 are the VF and the virtual network adapter connection. They only bind to the network adapter multiplexer protocol. And SRIOV network connection is generated by the NIC teaming of the max driver model. It bind to all necessary up layer protocols, but it doesn't bind to the, its own protocol driver. So as we know that Hyper-V supports the SRLV land migration, so let's see how Hyper-V works. The important part of the VM network is the Network Virtual Service Client, that's the NetVIC. NetVIC can also communicate with the Network Virtual Service Provider through the VM bus in parent partition. So that's the synthetic data path. The NetVIC driver also communicate with the VF Minipod driver for the SRLV LAN migration. And the NetVSC also provide two installation files. One is for installing the NetVSC mini pod driver, another for installing the NetVSC protocol driver. Both two drivers share the same driver binary. Normally they are tagged, their name are tagged with the NDIS version, for example, NetVSC 6.3. So let's see the architecture of Hyper-V SRLV VF failover. So as you can see, the VF mini pod driver in Hyper-V is supposed to the bending interface upper range as the NDS VF. And the NetVSC protocol driver is the only protocol driver that is supposed to the NDS VF bending interface. So this means that these two drivers can bend together exclusively. And there's no notify object involved, neither no new virtual adapter is generated. Also, there's no bound or teaming involved. So the NetVSC protocol driver sitting in the same driver binary as the NetVSC Minipod driver. So as you can see, because of this, it is possible for the protocol driver to access the network data from NetVSC Minipod driver and forward them to the VF Minipod driver 
finally reached the virtual function device and the vice versa. So here is the network binding of Hyper-V. The, hyper, the Ethernet file is the VF network connection. It only bind to the NetVSC field over VF protocol driver. The Ethernet file is the Hyper-V virtual adapter connection. It bind to the TCP IP and the other protocols, but the Hyper-V field over VF protocol driver is hidden to it. So as we can see, the mass driver model is complicated. A new virtual adapter is generated. This requires deployment of the new virtual miniport driver. And the offload have to be restored in the max driver. And also the notify object in the max model is complicated. The installation involves installing the virtual adapter miniport driver, also the uh, offload the protocol code driver. So this means more efforts are required for the deployment of the max driver model. The Hyper-V model is simplified, uh, but it is only appropriate for Hyper-V. In Linux, the mailbox mechanism is implemented for the VF and PF communication. However, different mechanism is implemented for the Hyper-V in Windows. As a result, same device, VF device are advertised by different device ID. And the Windows VF mini pod driver end up with the different implementations too, as well as the binding interface are exposed differently. This means we cannot use the Hyper-V implementation directly in KVM. So here the question comes, what should we do for the SRIOV lab migration in Windows guest in KVM? The idea here is combine the max driver model and hyper model solution together. And that's the two net dev model in Windows. So he, let's, at first, let's take a look at the regular network and a virtual network and the virtual virtual function network. They have their own mini pod driver to, driver to serve them. That's the NetKVM and the VF mini pod driver. These drivers bind to the up layer protocol directly. Let's see what's new in the two net dev model for the SRL VLAN migration. So a new virtual IO protocol driver is implemented here. It shares the same driver binary as the NetQVM mini pod driver. So that's, that's very convenient for them to share the data between them. Also, the VF mini pod driver is post the binding interface and is here. As you can see, the virtual protocol driver and the up layer TCP IP other protocol also is post the end is binding interface. That means the Virtual mini pod, we have mini pod driver bound to the virtual protocol driver, also bound to the TCP IP other protocols. So a notify object is implemented here to guarantee the bending between virtual protocol and the VF mini pod driver are in one to one mode. So in the notify object is a COM object that sits in the dynamic link library. When the virtual protocol driver is being installed, the network transport class installer will register a notify object for this virtual protocol driver. So when the VF device is hot added, any new binding generated to the virtual protocol driver or the VF mini port driver will be detected. So if the binding is between the virtual protocol, and the VF mini pod, it will be allowed. Any other bindings bind to them will be disabled. So this guarantee the, the binding between the virtual protocol driver and the VF mini pod driver are exclusive. So the uh, protocol driver is the important part in the two net dev model. So I will talk about it in more details here. 
at first the, the protocol driver behave like a bridge between the mini port driver, whatever mini port driver and the VF mini port driver. And also in tonight that model, the VF adapter is coupled to the vertical adapter with the same MAC address. When the VF adapter is hot added, the protocol driver will search for the matched MAC address among all existing virtual network devices. If there's matched one, the protocol driver will bind it to the VF mini port driver and switch the data path to it. So when the VF network adapter is hard to remove, the protocol driver will shut down its bending and switch the data path back to the virtual IO. For the TS network data, the protocol driver will set the source handle of the network list as the VF mini port bending handle and forward the network data to the VF mini port through this handle. For the RX network data, the protocol driver will indicate all the uh, network data from VF mini port to the up layer protocol through the virtual mini port handle. The object identifiers are wrapped and forwarded. Offload are propagated in this same way. And the work of the propagation in this case is much less than the restoring offload work in Max Driver. So here is the bending details of the virtual SRLV. The Ethernet 5 is the VF network. It only bends to the Red Hat virtual net QM protocol driver. It doesn't bend to any other drivers. Ethernet 11 is the virtual connection. It bends to the TCP IP other protocol, but it doesn't bend to the, its own protocol driver. So uh, you can see that's not that you know how the TUNET dev model works in the uh, Windows virtual driver. So I will hand it over to Yen to talk about the current status of the TUNET dev model. Yen, please take it over. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. <clears throat> so let's talk about the status and the known issues. Uh, so the code for this solution is already upstream and you can use it. And the known issues that we have is, are the following. So first of all, uh, the support is only for the newer the rating systems. Uh, second, the statistics for the VF is missing because they are not propagated to the NetKVM driver. Uh, we have some issues that are related on the order of uh, starting of the devices. So one of them is a DHTP issue that we might have. And another thing that you should know is that if you want the solution to work on the specific uh, VF, you need to add the plug and play ID of this VF to either to the uh, notification object code or <coughs> to the registry. Uh, regarding the current solution with a virtual net spec and the NetFS standby, so we are not using this capability right now because are, we are relying on the notification object uh, to notify us about the appearance and disappearance of the devices in the system. Uh, in the future, we might use it. Uh, some changes in the installation. Uh, so first of all, <clears throat> what we had before, we had one INF file for the mini port driver. And after those changes, we have one INF file for the mini port driver and we have another INF for the protocol driver definition and for the notify object. So it's kind of a dual installation here. Uh, regarding uh, WHKL certification, before we were certifying the mini port driver and the Microsoft automatically reviewed the test package. And currently it's a two-step certification. So first we need to verify the mini port driver and there is automatic review for that. And then we should certify, verify the whole uh, solution and submit the, pack, uh, the test results. And it's a manual review for the second time. Uh, let's take a look at the performance numbers. And here's the, 
performance number on, on 100 uh, gigabit per second card uh, between the hosts. And uh, you can see it a uh, VM to remote host traffic. Uh, so there are several things. So first of all, what we wanted to see is there was almost no degradation uh, between uh, the usage of the VF and the usage of the TuneNet Dev model in our solution. And you can see it here. And in order to achieve it, uh, what we had to do is of course to uh, propagate the OIDs correctly in order to ensure the, that the offload is propagated correctly from uh, offload, offload settings are correctly propagated from the VF to the protocol driver and um, also uh, ensure the correct settings of the jumbo frames. You can see here MTU is a uh, 9,000. Uh, this is a data for a uh, remote host VM. As well, you can see that the performance here is almost not uh, diminished uh, when we are using our solution. And another results are uh, VM to VM bit on, that are running on the remote hosts. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, if you have more questions, please ask us in the chat or send us emails uh, with questions and comments and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.